Hi guys, it's Miss Gartel here, and today we're gonna be drawing and painting a lionfish. So this is what I've started. We're gonna start over and do another one with you. And I started painting mine, but you can use colored pencils, you can use crayons, markers, whatever you like to use. And I kind of like made up my own colors. The sea fish is kind of like a reddish brownish, and I think with touches of purple. So I focused more on a little bit of the browns and the purples, and I added in some of that yellow orange color in here just to make it a little brighter. I also added some seaweed, some rocks and seaweed. I always like to make rocks in front of the seaweed. It gives them more dimension and it gives a lot more going on in your picture. And also at the sea bottom as well, instead of just making one line across, I just like to make a few to give the ocean bottom a little bit more depth. I have a coral growing in the back here. Also for some, some other interests, and I have sand dollars and shells, but you can add whatever you like. It's your picture. What we're going to do is we're going to start to draw the lionfish, and I have this step-by-step -step page on the classroom post for you to see. And we're gonna do it step-by-step -step right here, and we'll get started right now. Before you start to draw, you can watch this as many times as you need to, make sure you get all your things set up, your paints, your pencil, your eraser, have all these things ready, have a Sharpie for outlining, if your parents don't let you use Sharpie, get another marker or get a black crayon is always good. Or just even a black pe color pencil is a little bit darker than a regular pencil. So that's always good for outlining. You really just wanna draw lightly so that if you do need to erase, that you can and it's not gonna make a big mark on your paper. So the first thing we do is we look on our paper, we see where we're gonna start to draw and the, the lionfish is our focus. So we're gonna put him right in the middle. And this is sort of like a rainbow shape or a half circle, like you'd start to make a sunrise. I'd have it come down a little bit more here. And then you're going to make a smile underneath. And this end I like to sort of round off back here. We're gonna add a little bit for his tail, which is also like a rounded U-shape coming off back here. And then he even has a fin, which comes out from that. Also kind of like this triangle shape, rectangle shape right there. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we have his body and his tail. We are gonna add his eye right here his eye is kind of like a bulgy eye. So you can make that nice and big, make another circle inside. He's got that bulgy eye and he even has this, I forgot what they called. They're not just fins. Um, they call them just fins and scales, but he's got this coming as you can see right out from his eye. And he's got these two little they look like horns. Maybe he's like dinosaur related. So he's got that. His mouth protrudes a little bit and he's got this frown. So we're gonna make this sort of bottom lip coming here. We can even erase this. He doesn't look like a happy fish. He's a venomous fish. I was told not a poisonous, venomous. I, I'm not sure of the difference. Maybe you can look that up and his spikes right at the bottom of his spikes are where his venom is. So we're going to draw this curve, which is part of his side fin. So we have this coming up and we can just draw one straight, going straight up out there and coming back down So right now so we know where that is and that's gonna be. And we have one at the bottom. These are fins coming out and I always say the lionfish looks like a fish with a mohawk because he's got that mohawk going on up over here. And we're gonna work on that. So now that I know where this fin is, 
we're going to start over here on his so-called mohawk now these are irregular shaped fins and this i'm told is where the poison resides the venom excuse me the venom resides right in there and we're going to make each fin and remember they're very thin and they're floating in the ocean so they don't have to be perfect they don't have to be straight they come on up they come on down and it comes up and back down so they don't have to be any particular size some could be thinner some could be fatter than the others and what's going to be a little tricky is where this overlaps so we're going to leave these right here where we are and we're going to go back to these side fins okay and we're going to do those one more thing before we do that we have our tail coming here this is the back fin so he's got this little back fin over here that we're gonna make. So it kind of comes out and it curves back to his body, these fins. So let's quickly do this. We're just making some lines in his fins, in the tail fin, okay? And in this back fin here, this is kind of easy to just add. Those are like the veins in the tail. So now we're gonna come back, we're almost done. We're gonna come back and we're gonna add some more of these side for his big, this big fin that's on the side. And when he swims, they kind of flare out and he's really very pretty when he swims. And they tell you to just be careful not to touch him because he's, it's dangerous. Okay, we're gonna make these come out and they're gonna meet this part here Okay, so there's that fin. And we've got most of him done. Now, drawing in his stripes are gonna be a little confusing. Okay, so I just want you to pay attention because over here, he's got lots of stripes all over and even in his fins, it's lot, very stripy. So what I did, I didn't finish painting here, but what I did was I left this sort of like this orangey pink Kind of like those sunset colors that we like i left that and um and I, I kept these a little bit more on the purple side when i'm coloring it in just to make that little distinction and even here behind his those fins these are going to be a little bit darker purple so that every this stands out from the rest of his body okay so i just wanted you to see that but it is a little confusing as you're drawing. Round his eye, he's got it almost looks like gigantic eyelashes. But they're these, it's just markings. Like any other animal, like cat or a dog would have markings. Those are his markings. And then we're going to have, we can have a stripe here, like this. And we're gonna have some other stripes. Now these stripes could be, some could be thinner some could be thicker they're going in all different directions there's even some spotting on him so you can add some spots here and there and as i said this doesn't have to be in any particular the sizing is all up to you i like to make them kind of work with these stripes even though it's not necessary but it kind of looks i don't know, I think it looks good that way now here, what you wanna try and do is match up some of these stripes to go down his body. Don't worry if you don't. And this is the space in between. Okay, when you're painting, you'll see it a little bit better. Okay, so you want these stripes to carry down. All right, to the bottom of the fish and to line up so that it looks all like one piece. Okay, you don't want it to look like you left out some things. Okay, so here the stripes come around and we can even make down here. We can even make another one there. Sort of cover that tail part and have another one here for his tail. We can add some of those spots 
over here. And you can also add them in with the Sharpie as you go. So now I will take my Sharpie and start to outline. So I would probably start with his eye, the center, and I might give him that highlight right in the center. Okay. And here I have his face. Remember that bottom lip is like a pouty bottom lip. You can make it even a little bigger. And these, remember these are all like very soft details, really. I mean, we're drawing on the paper, but the fish is really floating in the water. So, okay, so we're just gonna go over, let's go over this. Don't forget, let's, to make, let's make this line so we don't lose that, the line of our fish or the outline of our fish. And be careful, you don't wanna go over some of those lines. And if you do, not a big deal. We can just paint over them or color over them. It's up to you. As you can see, my fish comes out different every time I do it. And like every, like a real fish would be different every time we do it. So we're gonna finish outlining everything and you can do that more on your own. So we're gonna just go over everything with the Sharpie. And I like to add a few of these little spots here. They're just irregular shapes, circle shapes that I'm adding. And don't forget the ones on the bottom, where this is that big side fin. That's a huge, huge fin. And you'll finish that. Now, now that we have that, and you'll finish outlining everything, we'll go to the bottom. As I said, I like to make these rocks very simple, they look like little potatoes, okay? One could be in front, one could be in back. You can have your seaweed coming out from behind them. It's more like the seaweed is growing out from behind them. <coughs> That's my dog. And now we're gonna put in our sandy bottom. And like I said, you can have different <coughs> shapes. <coughs> Sorry, he's barking so much. I don't know why, or she is. And so we have our sandy bottom. We can add, I like adding this coral. It's almost like a tree branch with no leaves. <coughs> Shh. Okay, so it's almost like a tree and no leaves. So just branches coming out of this coral and you can add as many as you like and I like it because I can make it like that red corally color and it's kind of pretty it adds color to your picture I also like adding um, a sand dollar to the picture I like adding a few different things on the bottom it makes your picture a little more interesting Okay, I just, I like doing under the sea pictures and I think a lot of you do because we're always drawing them at school and these are from some of our books that we have there. The shells, my favorite shell is this one and you just start by making like an E shape and going around and around and around and you just stop. This one, that fan shape is very easy. I make that little end and then I make this kind of fan shape coming out. And then you just add some of these lines, kind of easy. This one also is a very easy one shell to make. I see, I get a lot of those off the beach. It's sort of like, it's also starting with that, oh, that spiral. And then the shell itself is like an oval shape. And it even has a couple of stripes like the lionfish on there and it might have some dots. So look at maybe some of the shells you might have laying around at home. Okay, or well, the rocks you might have at home, laying on the on the street, on the, the, the garden or around your house. Okay, and look in books and see what you like to do. I like to paint, <clears throat> I like to, to paint the lionfish just because his that he, the fish and the floatiness of all his petals um, seem to work with paint. 
If you don't have paint, use markers or crayons, all right? What's nice is with the markers, you know, you can wet them and they will, they will kind of blend. The Crayola markers, not the Sharpie. The Crayola markers, one, if you wet them, they almost turn into like a paint. So they're kind of nice to do that way. And just try not to get too many puddles because then they drip all over the place. Okay, and you can start lightly and you could always make things darker. If you see, I'm even taking the paint that, that's from there and adding it. I have very little paint on my brush. And here I'm trying to do those little pieces in between. Okay, so this way the stripes look like they continue from behind the fish. And I'm using purple. I just like the way it looks. So I've used the purple, the pink, and that uh, yellow, and the orange. I've used that for my colors. Okay, you don't want to get it too muddy. Okay, you know that purple and yellow are complementary colors, so you don't want it to get too muddy. You have to be careful when you're using those, just to use them very gently. Okay, the greens are great when you're doing the seaweed, and I would use like the two different greens or more, and just keep going. Well, you can use this dark yellow for the sandy bottom, or you can make it brown, but just do one color at a time so that this way it doesn't run into each other and you get a nice clean color. You, you might want colors, like in the fish, I wanted the colors to run into each other, which was fine. Okay, but in other areas, I might not. Like, I did my rocks gray. Now, to get them gray, I just put a lot of water on the black, and I took just a drop of the black, and I sort of just watered it down right on the paper, and that turned out to be a nice gray color. Okay, so see, you can just this dark yellowy kind of color, or if you don't have that, you can maybe mix a yellow and an orange together, or a yellow and a brown. So you can do a lot of experimenting with the paint. And there you have your beautiful lionfish. Okay, so get going. It's beautiful, and I can't wait to see what you do. Thanks a lot, and talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.